Nothing ever good comes from overpromising. I'm sure every time Sean Murray had an interview, the rest of Hello Games would wince just a little bit. Sometimes it's better to simply say nothing at all. Will you be able to play with your friends? Yeah. But of course, you gotta sell your game. It's a tricky balancing act, especially in the current landscape of gaming. Somewhat of a pioneer in the gaming world, Peter Molyneux, has an impressive pedigree with games like Populous, Black and White, and Fable under his belt. But one thing he's also quite well known for is overpromising. No one, no one sells a game quite like Peter Molyneux. The core of what um, Fable is, is the idea that you get to play the character that you actually play in the world. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Deep Cuts, a show that examines lore, backstories, and theories in video games. Peter Molyneux founded Bullfrog Studios in 1987 and found huge success after the studio's very first game, Populous, in 1989. Throughout the 90s, Bullfrog would put out a string of hit games such as Syndicate, Theme Park, Populous 2, and Dungeon Keeper, while also getting acquired by Electronic Arts in the process. Big money. And Peter clearly relished in the success and found himself kind of like the front man of the studio. Being the one that got interviewed and the one to give statements to media outlets, often to the ire of the rest of the Bullfrog staff, due to the things that Peter would say that were just blatantly untrue. In Theme Park, if your customers get injured on a ride, they will turn up in Theme Hospital. Theoretically, you could have up to 60 players linked, but 20 is more feasible. The game supported 8. In Syndicate, Molyneux promised players that they could insert DVD movies and they would play on in-game billboards, despite computers at the time only supporting compact discs. It really got out of hand. In 1997, Peter Molyneux left Bullfrog to found Lionhead Studios whose very first game was set to be his best game ever. If you encourage him to eat a lot, he will actually get fatter. Fatter and fatter. That game was black and white, which, to be fair, was a really good game. And then there was the infamous Fable Acorn, where Peter stated that you could knock an acorn off a tree and slowly, over the course of the game, watch it grow into a tree of its own. How can I try and get over this stupid line I said back in, in 1999, I think it was, about an acorn and an oak tree, which was an insane thing, Adam. This was just one of many promises for the original fable that never came to fruition. These shortcomings actually led to Molyneux making an apology on the Lionhead forums back in 2004. And here's the thing, I actually, I actually really like Fable. I like Peter Molyneux's games. I think he makes good games. He just... He just gets carried away talking. It's really something that has cast a shadow over his entire career. It also spawned a pretty fantastic parody Twitter account called Peter Molydew, which is still active till this day. In 2015, during an interview with Rock Paper Shotgun, interviewer John Walker opened the interview with the question, are you a pathological liar? And not long after, Molyneux put himself in a self-imposed media exile, forbidding himself from talking to video games media altogether. It's all a bit harsh. I do I do have sympathy. I always feel bad for the person who finds themselves in the internet hot seat, even though it's a result of their own actions. At the end of the day, his intentions weren't malicious. So what exactly happened? How did one of the industry's biggest names fall so far from grace? Peter Molyneux left Lionhead Studios in 2012, and in that very same year, founded a new game company, 22 Cans, who also published their very first game in that same year. Pretty quick turnaround. The game was called Curiosity, What's Inside the Cube, a mobile game released for iOS and Android. And it wasn't even so much of a game as it was an experiment. The game consisted of tapping on the screen to break cubes that make up another giant cube. Except this is a shared experience. The community was to work together to break apart this giant cube and the many cubes that it was composed of. Over 60 billion cubes. It's a lot of cubes. What would compel people to do this? What would compel people to work together collectively to achieve a seemingly mundane goal? Curiosity? Or more of Peter Molyneux's promises? In an interview with Wired, Peter Molyneux states, what is inside the cube is life-changingly amazing by any definition. That's all I'm going to say. 
and the secret of what's inside the cube would only be revealed to the person who broke the final cube. What's in the box? And this undoubtedly piqued the, well, curiosity of a whole lot of people, as the app was downloaded to over 4 million devices. And on May 26, 2013, a player broke the final cube and removed the final layer in curiosity. The player was 19-year-old Brian Henderson from Scotland. Upon winning, he was directed to a YouTube video, and it was up to Brian if he wanted to share the video with the public or not. He opted to share it. Welcome to the end of Curiosity. We started this experiment back in November of 2012. Now, when we released it, the first real question was, what is inside the cube? And I said, and I'm known for these things, I said there's something amazing in the side, something life-changing inside. Well, this is what this video is about. The video was four minutes of Peter Molyneux on a white backdrop of the inside of a cube, where he gave details on another game, a new god game, Peter Molyneux's bread and butter. It's called Goddess. The winner of Curiosity, Brian Henderson, was to play a significant role in the game as the god of gods, where he would directly influence how other people would play the game. And it is the ability to be a digital god. And on top of that, he would also receive a portion of Goddess's profits. Now we're talking. The video is actually still live and viewable on the 22 Cans YouTube channel. You will have fame, you will have fortune, and you will have the power to introduce morals into a game. I love that at the end of the day, what was inside the cube? It was Peter Molyneux promising things. Classic. And the promises he makes are lofty. This is where the problems began for Peter Molyneux and 22 Cans. Goddess was kickstarted and met its funding goal by December of 2012. However, the development had many issues with the original goal to have the project done in nine months, when in reality it took over two years. The original pitch for the game was a hardcore god simulator for PC, in the same vein as Molyneux's previous titles, but the game that was delivered came to iOS and Android first, and would eventually get a bare-bones, stripped-down PC version, full of microtransactions, missing promised features, and it had its promised multiplayer mode dropped entirely. And despite being kickstarted, 22 Cans partnered with publisher DNA only six months after hitting the Kickstarter goal. Things were not looking good for Goddess, and fans and Kickstarter backers were pissed. Jump forward to 2015 while fans were still waiting for the version of the game that was promised. In a bizarre turn of events, Peter Molyneux announced to the press a brand new, completely unrelated game called The Trail. This news came as a shock to the fans still waiting on updates to Goddess, and it even came as a shock to many of the 22 Can staff who hadn't even been informed on the new project either. During this time, 22 Cans was hemorrhaging staff, and many were choosing to jump ship. And all the while, let's not forget about old Brian Henderson, a man who was to have his life forever changed, promised fame and riches. When the trail was announced in 2015 and Goddess quietly shelved, over two years after being the one to complete Curiosity, Brian hadn't received anything. In fact, to date, as of the recording of this video, Brian Henderson has still not received anything. And to be fair, Brian was promised a portion of Goddess's profits. Though I think it's safe to say, this game did not turn a profit. And not only did Brian not receive any cash, but 22 Cans had dropped communications with Brian altogether. In a 2015 interview with The Guardian, Molyneux, when pressed on the subject, explained that the person on the team at 22 Cans who was looking after Brian left the company, and nobody took over the responsibility. It's not a good look. All of these things culminating to the Rock Paper Shotgun interview. You will accrue riches from that game, from the start until the finish of your reign. That, by any definition of the word, is life-changing. My goal here is not to put Peter Molyneux on blast. What's funny is, despite all of these things, I don't dislike him. I like his games. Even his most recent game, The Trail, actually was fairly well received. Not to mention his legacy and his influence, I think the industry is better because of him. And if anything, his tale is a cautionary one. One that I can only hope other aspiring creators can learn from. 
Peter Molyneux has been abnormally silent recently, but whenever he inevitably returns with his next game, just know to take everything with a grain of salt. In 2015, Devolver Digital published a game called Not a Hero, featuring a playable character, Brian Henderson, a god with god powers. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Deep Cuts. As always, let me know what you thought about it, and please hit that like button if you enjoyed it, because it does help this channel out a lot. And I've, I've made a whole lot of other Deep Cut videos. If you like this one, consider clicking on the playlist and binge-watching a bunch of the other ones. They're, they're pretty good, if I do say so myself. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. Peace.